So Anglin said this last night, I guess. He said, okay, so having slept on it, there are some things that probably need clarified here, given that this has turned into a massive thing. TLDR, I'm disavowing Nick as any kind of le leader figure. I'm not saying I hate him or he's my enemy or that people shouldn't listen to him. I'm simply saying he is too irresponsible to be in any kind of leadership position. I still like him and think he's funny. Let me say this. Th or excuse me. Let me say this is personal for me. I don't know Nick except parasocially, but he knows me in the same way, though. Excuse me. But he knows me in the same way, and though I think he soured on, on me some months ago to, due to what I think is, was a serious misunderstanding. Now, I was wondering what that was, but... He said very nice things about me, and I've obviously been a big influence on him. So this is all personal insofar as I am a human with emotions. This status is limited. But I pride myself on being objective, and one of the things that keeps me objective is allowing people to question me in a public way and responding to basically whoever wants to take a shot. So as of the time of this writing, sign up for the forum is open, and this is posted in a place where new people can post. Anyone can say their piece. And I actually got on there and wrote something myself. Uh, not really adversarial, but, well, I mean, maybe a little not towards him, but um, just kind of a, st a statement on, on things. But uh, some of you will agree and some will not, but I want to make everything completely clear so there is no confusion about where I stand or what I've said. I don't want my words to be used by other people with agendas, excuse me, other people with other agendas, nor do I want people to think I've declared some kind of war on Nick. The situation. Here's the situation. I was intensely supportive of Nick. I said, ride or die, and I said the pledge that I would rape, kill, and die for him. I never said that pledge, by the way. Quite. <laughs> it's funny because A-logs are trying to needle me about it. Like, they were going to make me say it. This is the Anglin post. Uh, this being red cocoa berries. Uh, A-logs were needling me. Like, Ralph's never taken the pledge. Ralph yeah, because Ralph's not going to pledge that for anybody. Like, that's fucking retarded. Like, Now, nah, you could say it's a meme or whatever, uh, but I pointedly did not take that pledge uh, and th always thought it was retarded. And I would think it's retarded for whoever it is, not even about Nick Fuentes, if it was Medicare or fucking somebody I like. If Dick Masterson had a pledge like that, I would be like, uh, no. No, thanks. I, I like Dick Masterson a lot. He's my friend, but I'm not going to take that. <laughs> I'm not going to take that pledge. But anyway, continuing with Anglin's passage here, he says, I burned bridges personally and professionally in support of Nick. That is just a description of what happened. Believe it or not, there were a lot of people who had been around this scene for a long time who were not comfortable with Nick taking the position of CEO of anti-Semitism. Now, I've never heard of this position, but... He said, note, CEO of anti-Semitism is a position that exists and has, for whatever reason, always existed, going back even before the war. And he says, Henry Ford, Father Coughlin, Dudley Pelly, Charles Lindbergh, Fritz Kuhn, and the Bund. Definitely after the war, you had Willis Carto and Yaki, Oliver, and then George Lincoln Rockwell, uh, who was succeeded by Frank Collin, who was a Jew pederast. Then it was David Duke, primarily until the 2010s, when I became by far the most influential anti-Semite, but had no interest in any sort of leadership role. Matt Heinbach, Richard Spencer, and then Mike Enoch all wanted to be the CEO of anti-Semitism. It's a long, confusing story, which probably half of you remember because you were there. Anyway, Charlottesville was Richard Spencer's baby, and it destroyed hundreds of lives. People killed themselves. People went to jail and prison. One poor, poor bastard is doing life for a car accident. I hold some degree of responsibility for this because I endorsed the event. <coughs> Excuse me. So after all that, Nick came along. He was controversial for a lot of reasons. I watched him for a while, giving him some support as far back as 2017 when he first started. He became friends with Beards and Beardfather, who is one of the few people I've known in this game who isn't a piece of shit. It became clear that Nick, chat might disagree, but it became clear that Nick was a precocious genius when he started doing the debates. He has oratory skills that are simply incredible. I also thought, and frankly still do, or hope I think, that Nick had a moral backbone that most people I've run into simply do not have. Most people are not willing to die or go to prison, which means that they actually have no place in right-wing politics, because if you're not willing to die or go to prison, then you're basically already working for the feds. That hopefully is self-explanatory because I'm not going to explain it right now. Part of being willing to die or go to prison for a political agenda means you're going to be a little bit off. So at some point, I fully endorsed Nick as the heir, heir, heir apparent and de facto CEO of anti-Semitism. 
Anyone can remember that I went hard on this. I said I would not tolerate anyone who was against him, and I used all of my influence to push this, excuse me, to push this, and push out anyone who would challenge his role. I pissed off a lot of people, and frankly, it cost me quite a bit of money. But I believed very strongly that it was the right thing to do, and I know if I was in the same place again, I would do the same thing again. So that is the context of my disavowal. I'm no longer a supporter of Nick Fuentes as the CEO of anti-Semitism, given that he has shown and I have witnessed that he lacks the necessary judgment and people skills to be in a leadership role in any kind of movement. The decision to try to rehabilitate Richard Spencer is simply beyond the pale, and I honestly can't even believe it actually happened. It's unbelievable on so many different levels. We're being thorough here, so let's start with just explaining the fact that this was a rehabilitation. Nick is a very well-liked personality. Spencer is an internet villain who is universally hated. He had no audience at all. Nick was granting him his own audience, and he was meeting him on friendly terms. He was humanizing him. People sent me Telegram screenshots, and I've seen the comments on Rumble. And I don't know about Spencer having no audience at all. He's got, you know, he's got a pretty decent traction on Twitter, and he has his own group. But I see what he's saying that that he maybe not didn't have much of an audience with. Uh, what we were talking about, perhaps you want to describe them white nationalists or, you know, people who might follow a CEO of anti-Semitism, whatever you want to call it. But I agree with that, but I don't know that he had zero audience. But anyway, um, the Telegram comments might be from private or semi-private chats, but this is what the Rumble comments look like, and he showed some of them. Uh, Richard Spencer's all right. Uh, he's a nice guy. Haven't heard from Spencer in a while. Great conversation, white pilling, et cetera, stuff like that. Nick has used his position of authority in his audience to purposefully rehabilitate Richard Spencer, to make him part of the conversation again, to make him likable. You can claim, oh, it's just a stream, bro, it's not a big deal. It is, however, a very big deal. Richard Spencer was gone, and now he's back. Nick did that. He made the decision to do that. People have said that these two had already run into each other on Twitter spaces. That is not the same thing. You can run into anyone on a Twitter space. Sitting down and doing a three-hour interview on a guy's show is something much different. It's saying, I think this guy is important enough for me to endorse in this way. And it was not a debate. I would be against a debate as well, but this was a friendly chat. When you use your own charisma and your own audience to paint a hated villain in a positive light in a public setting, changing the negative views of the audience to positive views, that's called a rehabilitation. And then he says, I fell out with TRS initially, but this is in parentheses, by the way. I fell out with TRS initially because they rehabilitated federal informant Chris Cantwell in exactly the same way. TRS was later exposed as having an FBI informant working with them directly. I'm not going to go into the Fed sub with Spencer because the proof I have is not stuff I can share publicly, and trust me, bro, is not an argument I use. Technically, I could use myself as a source, but I won't, and I don't want it to become, or excuse me, want it to be some distraction point. I will say that Spencer sat at the snitch table with TRS after they were exposed, and we go by prison rules because that's the only way you can run a right-wing political movement. You sit at the snitch table, you're a snitch. Plus, the, f the faggot literally went all in with Matt Heimbach and his costume Nazi brigade. If Nick doesn't think this was a rehabilitation, then that might actually be worse. But it doesn't really matter what he thinks about it as we all see what he did. This was the single most irresponsible thing that he could possibly do with his position. Richard Spencer is the worst cancer on earth. With that Charlottesville lunacy and the things that came after, he destroyed the movement and, that me and a bunch of other people built from 2012 to 2017. He did nothing to create it. He never had anything to offer. But it was a leaderless movement, and he simply stepped in and told the media, I'm the leader of this movement. Then he destroyed it and left with no consequences. He shit on me personally by doing this. Talking about Nick. I don't know why he would do this. What did I do? I've done nothing but support him for more than five years. I've supported him more than anyone. And yes, that is personal, but it also speaks to leadership ability. Who the hell does something like this to one of their biggest and most prominent advocates? Why would you do that? It's insane. He knows my history with this individual. He shit on everyone whose life was ruined by Richard Spencer. James Fields is doing life in prison. Others have been to jail. Many more have lost their jobs. Several people killed themselves. He shit on every single person who worked to build the 2016 alt-right. He shit on his own followers by making them believe the Spencer guy is alt-right. Why doesn't he go ahead and bring back Chris Cantwell and Mike Enoch too? Why not Matt Heimbach? None of them did nearly as much harm as Spencer. They're all three more interesting than Spencer as well, quite frankly. Here's something you may find fascinating. The primary reason I was so adamant about forcing the issue of Nick as the leader of the movement is so that we didn't end up in a situation where someone shows up and claims that role. 
Isn't that a sick twist? Now you see the position I'm in. I've endorsed Nick very strongly, and now Nick has done the most irresponsible thing I could ever imagine him doing. So I have to disavow. I don't have any choice. What sort of piece of shit would I be if I just ignored this? You can agree with me or disagree with what I wrote about, excuse me, wrote above about what it means to rehabilitate Richard Spencer. Maybe you don't think it's that big of a deal, or you buy into this, oh, bro, just chill, it's a chat line. But I do not think you can read what I wrote and doubt that I believe it or doubt that I am acting on my conscience here. I do not think anyone can claim in good faith that I have ulterior motives here. It wouldn't really make much sense for me to have spent years building up Nick just to shit on, shit on him for no reason now, would it? For me, this is not about personalities. If it was, I would, I probably would say, ah, he's a bro, it's cool. But I destroyed my whole life for this shit. I'm not going to see my, excuse me, I'm never going to see my family again. This isn't a fucking game and I'm not doing it's cool, bro. I signed up ready to die or go to prison or live in exile. And yeah, he's cool though, does not cut it. Analogy? I want to do an analogy, but there really it, there is really no one on earth that you can compare Richard Spencer to other than like someone from Pizzagate, but let me try something here. People may remember Jaden McNeil. He was Nick's friend who for some reason became his enemy and then did a tour on weird podcasts attacking him. So imagine if I called up Jaden McNeil and did a friendly three-hour show with him and then said, it's just content, bro. We just talked about Zionism in the Ukraine. Would that be cool? Does that seem something like something I would ever do? Would people defend me if I did that? But see, the analogy only works on the level of Nick personally shitting on me. What he did by rehabilitating Spencer was shit on the entire world. He shit on all of humanity. There is no possible analogy. People have asked why I made excuses for other bad decisions Nick made. The reason is because I supported him and I hoped he would mature and start making better decisions. But rehabilitating Spencer is beyond the pale. It's too much. It is intolerable. I could list off the bad decisions he's made, just so we're clear that this was not one bad misstep. Just one, whatever, he didn't use just, but. Should I? Do people need reminded of his issues with people skills? Honestly, I don't want to turn this into something where I'm just bringing up a bunch of old shit and acting like that, excuse me, acting like that is all relevant. I hate when people do this. Honestly, I hate all these infighting disavowal things, and I hate writing this right now. It's horrible. People who have followed me for a long time know I used to support all kinds of people, just assuming everyone must be honest. Because why would they lie? I totally stopped supporting everyone, stopped mentioning anyone except Nick. Nick, I thought, was different. So no, I'm not going to give examples. Everyone knows that he's had falling out after falling out, and everyone knows that every time it, that's happened, it's been someone else's fault. When I made my original statement disavowing Nick's rehabilitation of Richard Spencer, his statement on the matter was, fuck Anglin. An adult would have said, I'd have to hear what his issues were with the stream and try to understand where he's coming from. That's what a leader would have said. A leader cannot respond to any and all criticism with, fuck him, I'm right, I'm always right. In order to be a leader, you have to listen to the people you are asking to trust you and to follow you. This is basic like fucking Socrates shit or Tony Robbins. Any and all material ever written on leadership has a very basic first principle that the people you are asking to follow you have to be able to ask questions and be giving, given explanations. I guess he's never read Plato or Tony Robbins, but this should be intuitive. And hey, it's in Mein Kampf. Being able to listen to concerns and address them is probably the single most basic aspect of leadership, and only sycophants will follow a leader they don't feel they can question, and sycophants are useless and never actually loyal. Yeah, who won chat? You can vote on the debate, too. Uh, I see Dingo in there. Conclusion. I am disavowing my previous endorsement of Nick as a leader because I do not see him acting as a leader. That is the full extent to which I'm disavowing him. I'm not disavowing him as an artist, as a podcaster, as an entertainer, as a boy genius, or any of his other roles. Actually, we might need to redact the boy genius thing. He's closer to 30 than 20. At some point, the angsty snark thing is not going to be so hip, you know. We don't want to end up with a, fuck, I just totally forgot the guy's name. And then I'll skip that part because I don't want to get involved in, in that statement. But he says, I'm not hating on him. I'm not declaring war on him. I'm not even turning against him. I expect him to respond with vitriol as he already has in part, and that's fine. That's the way he deals with criticism. Maybe he won't. Maybe he will take this to heart. Who knows? But I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to tell anyone it's him or me or you're either with us or against us. Nick has a great show. He does entertaining interviews. 
He's charismatic, and he goes maybe on it. I don't know that he does too many, but he's charismatic, charismatic, and he's good at getting the important information out there. The leadership position was maybe just premature. Maybe he can learn leadership skills. He's smart enough that he should be able to, even if it's not intuitive to him. This can be understood on an intellectual level. Nothing's going to change on my end other than I'm going to stop giving him regular shout outs. I'm going to go back to my position, which should have always been my position, and not endorse anyone for anything. It's really my fault for breaking that rule. I don't want this to be used by people who hate Nick for reasons I don't even agree with. I don't hate Nick. I don't even dislike him. Well, I do think he's an asshole, but he's very funny. I wish him the best, and if he was the sort to take advice, I would tell him to keep being an entertainer and informer and an informer and keep encouraging young, young people to get in positions of power. I would also advise him to take his responsibility to his followers seriously and not to lead them astray. You can't say, well, people can figure it out for themselves. Obviously, if that was true, we wouldn't be in this situation. People look for leaders because they want to be guided, and you don't guide them to Richard Spencer. Jesus said, be shepherds, remember? And hey, I said I wasn't going to just bring up a bunch of old shit because I hate when people do this breakup thing. When I disavowed Mike Enoch, he started talking about how I was into underage girls, and I was just disgusted by such a suggestion. The only thing in the world I hate more than Richard Spencer is people who don't respect the age of consent. But yeah, Nick did Cozy.TV, and he had all these people on there who were talking shit about him and promoting, like, satanic doctrines. So he's telling young kids, yeah, come check out Cozy.TV, and they go there, and there's some 40-year-old freak using Zoomer slang and trying to be a father figure to disenfranchise youth while promoting Alice Bailey and saying Nick is gay. It's like, bro, you have a responsibility to these kids. You can't just lead them into this sort of thing. And promoting people who are against you is insane on every level. I told him that too. But Meanwhile, by the way, the American hero, Ali Jamal, was not allowed to have a channel, despite the fact that he is leading the charge against trannies all throughout the Southwest. So this is another principle of leadership, along with allowing people to question you. You have to guide the people. If I'm just going all out, I think he should respect people. His general lack of respect for others makes one wonder how much respect he has for himself. That's all I have to say. I'm not posting this on the front page. I figure anyone who this is relevant to can find it here. At the time of writing, you can, you can sign up and comment. I did that, actually. I will probably turn off registration at some point, but this is a big enough thing that I'm saying here that I think it's only fair that I allow anyone who wants to to respond, and if the questions seem relevant, I'll reply. And that was Anglin's statement, and I read the whole thing. American hero, Ali Jamal. Uh, okay, let me respond to this now. Give me thoughts on that, chat. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Now, American hero. I guess that's why, and I already know, I guess Ali Jamal saw that, and that's why he... He rolled with uh, he rolled with Anglin. Uh, Tony the Tiger says now Cozy is just old Jew harpies and simps like Tenria. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.